Hello again, welcome back inside the Tier 4 studio here in Morgantown, West Virginia. For the Charleston Gazette Mail, I am Mike Casaz, and you are back for Part 5 of our 2015 and 15 countdown. Today, let's talk about the offensive line. Once more, I'm not going to drag you through a player-by-player -player analysis, but I'm going to give you an angle to look at because it really does shed some light on the strength of this group of players. West Virginia has an immediate impact player on offense this year, but not in the traditional sense. We are well aware of what junior college players, FBS transfers, even freshmen, have done on the offensive side of the ball the past few years. Could be Clint Trickett and Charles Sims coming from an FBS school. It could be Mario Walford, Kevin White, even Skylar Howard coming from a junior college. What about a guy like Jordan Thompson or Wendell Smallwood coming from high school? It happens. Omitted from that conversation, offensive linemen. It's a rare achievement for a true freshman or even a junior college player to spend some time on the field, whether as a starter or a backup, in their first seasons. I think that's going to change this year, though, because the Mountaineers have Kyle Bosch. Who is Kyle Bosch? It's a good question. Right now, he's the backup left guard, so why are we spending so much time talking about him? Well, how long is he going to remain the backup left guard? How long until he gives the coaches someone and something to think about? Might not be that long. Let's explore why. The 2013 recruiting class, Kyle Bosch was kind of the big deal. At a high school in Illinois, schools from the East Coast, the West Coast, the South, the Midwest, they went there to watch him play. They had him come to their camps. They wanted to know if this guy was as good as the tape showed him to be. And he was. Top 300 player in the ESPN rankings. Top 250, according to Rivals.com. Not only that, he was in the top half of those rankings. So let's just say he has great reputation. He ended up at Michigan, started three games as a true freshman. So again, potential. That eventually led to talent. You got on the field for three games as a freshman, you're probably a pretty good player. It didn't all work out well. Last season, he left the team. Coaching change from Brady Hope to Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh did not exactly welcome Kyle Bosch back. Bosch needed a place to play. He lands up at, ends up at West Virginia. How did this happen? Interesting story, and it kind of weaves together what I've already discussed. Back when he was being recruited the first time, he was good enough to be considered a possibility at Stanford. Think about the identity of the Stanford offensive line. Big, strong, nasty guys, power running game, right? Who was the offensive line coach out there? Well, the offensive tackle slash tight ends coach was Ron Crook. He spent a lot of time getting to know Kyle Bosch and his family. So many years later now, Ron Crook got the job done this time. Brought Bosch from Ann Arbor to Morgantown. Had him on campus in the spring and practiced him just in case he'd be eligible. The thought was he would not be eligible because... He did play last year at Michigan, then left the team, spent some time away, so the Mountaineers put in a waiver request, and the NCAA granted it. So, Ron Crook, double achievements for him, landing Kyle Bosch, and then practicing him throughout the spring. Lo and behold, sometime later the waiver goes through, and now you have a top, top offensive lineman eligible to play this season. So he's the backup left guard right now. That's interesting because the starting left guard is Adam Pankey, who was the starting left tackle last season. Ask the coaches, whether it's the offensive line coach, the head coach, or anybody else on offense, where does West Virginia need a player? Left tackle. Yadni Kajus is out there. It might work out for him. But he's a redshirt freshman. Again, newcomers, not exactly an easy situation for them. Behind him, Sylvester Towns, a junior college player who sat out last season because, again, it's hard for a first-year player to be able to handle himself out there. So you wonder, could they slide Adam Pankey back out there? And then all of a sudden... You slide Kyle Bosch in a left guard, would that work? It's a possibility. It's something to consider because left to right, West Virginia doesn't have a ton of experience. A pool of players, yes, it's deeper than it's been in quite some time. More players on scholarship right now than Dana Holgerson has had before along the offensive line. The truth of the matter is, though, 99 teams in the country can account more starts from their offensive line than West Virginia. West Virginia has 47 starts collected among the two deep on its offensive line. And that belongs almost exclusively to Panky, Tyler Orlowski, the center, Marquise Lucas, the right tackle, and then Tony Matteo has one start in there last year. He's the right guard right now over Grant Lingefelter. Matteo is a redshirt junior. Lingefelter is a redshirt sophomore. They both played five games their entire career. Truth of the matter is, they haven't even played a whole lot of quarters in their entire career. So, players, yes. Depth, yes. Experience, uh-uh. Talent, time will tell right there. But could you fix some of the talent? Could you bolster the experience by making what you might consider a logical switch, moving the guy who was a left tackle last season back to left tackle, elevating a guy who was a top recruit two seasons ago.
to be the left guard? An answer we will get in some time, not right now, because preseason practice does not begin until August 3rd. The good part for West Virginia, these are answers that they actually can provide right now. It's been a long time since West Virginia has had questions and hasn't had responses that it needs. All the options are there right now to mess around and find a way to get your best five in the field. Could it be Bosch? Maybe. Will it be? We'll know soon. For the Charleston Gazette Mail, I'm Mike Casaza. We'll see you next time.